Hey everyone, Alex from O'Brien here. In this video, I'm going to give you some useful information for taking a closed tray implant impression. And if you aren't aware, closed tray impressions are the type where the impression coping comes to a stop inside of the impression tray. And this is in contrast to open tray impressions where the impression coping passes through an opening that's left in the tray. Now, in order to take the impression, you will need a closed tray impression coping, which is also known as an indirect transfer. It's important that you only use impression copings that are designed for the closed tray technique to avoid inaccurate impressions. Closed tray impression copings are designed to be easily removed and reinserted into the impression after it has set up. Every closed tray coping has some type of index on the body portion that will be captured in the impression. The index could be a single flat side, multiple flat sides, indents, or really any other design that ensures that the impression coping can be placed back in the impression in the correct rotation. Now, once you remove the healing abutment, you'll attach the impression coping to the implant. And there are usually multiple different rotations in which the impression coping can be attached. If the implant has a hex interface, for example, the impression coping can be placed in one of six different rotations. Generally, it doesn't matter which rotation you choose, but sometimes a specific rotation might work better. An example of this is if the space between the adjacent teeth is narrow and you have an impression coping that has flat sides on it, orienting the flat sides to coincide with the contacts will typically be the best option. The impression coping screw can be hand torqued and a torque driver isn't necessary. If you do want to use a torque driver, however, you'll just wanna make sure you don't torque it past 10 to 15 Newton centimeters. With the impression coping in place, we recommend that you cover the screwdriver access hole with wax to prevent impression material from flowing in. Now, this is not a necessary step, but it can help to ensure that the impression coping fully seats into the impression. If wax isn't used and impression material flows into the driver access hole, it'll create a nub inside of the impression that may stop the impression coping from fully seating. When wax is used, it may also sometimes stay in the impression when the impression coping is removed, but it's easily removed with an explorer. You're typically going to need to use a single arch tray for implant impressions. Most impression coatings are fairly tall and will extend past the occlusal table of the adjacent teeth, which would prevent the patient from being able to fully close for a triple tray impression. And even if the impression coping is shorter, using a triple tray can cause an additional problem. And that's because closed tray impression copings rely on the tray itself for their vertical stop. If a triple tray is used, it's possible that the impression coping will tear through the material when it's being reinserted into the impression. It's also recommended that you only use medium or heavy body impression material for implant impressions, as the greater viscosity will help to maintain positional accuracy. Since you aren't trying to capture a margin, the wash material isn't as necessary. If you do use some light body material though, just keep it to a minimum so that the majority of the impression coping is captured in the heavier material. Once the impression material has set, you can remove the tray, unscrew the impression coping, and replace the healing abutment. We recommend not placing the impression coping back into the impression unless an implant replica has been attached to it first. If an impression coping is placed back in the impression without the replica, the technician will have to then remove the impression coping in order to attach that replica. And this can be an issue if only a small portion of the impression coping is sticking out of the impression, as it'll be difficult to get a good enough hold on the impression coping to pull it out. When sending the impression to the lab, be sure to include the impression coping. It's actually a fairly common occurrence for the impression coping not to be included with the case, which does delay production. I hope you found this video helpful, and as always, feel free to contact us with any questions. See you next time.